Faces are the most important subject matter in art. It's a never-ending source of material. When you put on one of my masks, you become somebody different. You start to embody that character and have a lot of fun with it. My name's Landon Meyer, and I make disturbingly realistic masks. I never thought I was gonna make a living doing masks. I was a picture framer, loan officer, pizza delivery driver, and then I got laid off. I've always been interested in doing something that's like really surreal and nightmarish. So it was more or less an experiment that took off. I am the only person out there that's doing hyper-realistic likeness masks. I'm kind of this weird mad scientist down in the basement. I start off getting lots of reference material. The hardest part is doing the sculpture. That can take anywhere from four days to a year. But once the sculpt is done and I have a mold, it's about a one week process to make a mask. They are ungodly expensive. They range $500 and up, and sometimes even high as $7,500. Over the years, I've made approximately 25 different designs, and I've produced with my own hands over a thousand masks. What I make, I like to consider wearable art. These are super realistic sculptures you can put over your head and wear. People just seem to have this astonished reaction to the masks. That's what I love about them. I uh, often do look at a pile of stuff at work and think, maybe I should stick that on my face. The Bob Bugs project started with just my Instagram account and I started using it for an art diary. I got an idea. Every day I disguise myself in some way. Day 363, now for a creative breakthrough. My name is Michael Gump. I am an art director and a prop master for crazy TV shows, and I'm also known as Bob Bugs. The Master of Disguise project is partly to build creative strength or maybe to like exorcise uh, creative demons, you know, in a way that's not just at my job, but also for my own evil wishes. You look at the picture, it maybe seems like it took a million years. I'm usually like, I gotta get this done, I gotta get that. So I just like, I get my stuff and I set it all up and start. So I usually like, you know, start with this area and then work my way out. And then it'll be like. People ask me all the time, like how many people have, do you have to help you with that? Usually nobody. Does it hurt? One that stands out in my mind was kind of like, what am I doing? I, I was putting clothespins on my face, and so I started sticking them on there, and then, and then I kind of panicked a little bit. I took them all off. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then and I was like, okay, let's, this is going to be fine. And then, and then I put them all back on. Like, you get used to discomfort pretty fast. But I'm concerned that it's definitely not that good for my skin. Do you have a favorite? I do have a special place in my heart for the one that's uh, like a green Mr. T because I just think it's funny, like uh, Mr. Green Tea, I call it. It's been a kind of exhausting process in some ways. I, I usually only get like maybe three hours of sleep a night. The discovery of the project and part of the point of the project is that you don't always know what's good. So on the days that I really feel tired and I don't really want to do it, I don't really have a very good idea, Sometimes those projects come out better than the ones that I'm really excited about. 
What's next? We'll have to wait and see. Normally there's this awkwardness around disability, but with that costume on there, that changed how people saw my son. They saw him first before they saw his disability. It just helps break down that barrier. Magic Wheelchair is a nonprofit that builds epic costumes for amazing kiddos in wheelchairs. Magic Wheelchair started when my son was three years old. Halloween rolled around and he wanted to be a pirate. We we're new to the whole disabilities and wheelchair thing. We didn't know anything about spinal muscular atrophy. I saw him sitting in his wheelchair and thought, well, oh, we could dress him up as a pirate, be a pirate in a wheelchair and let's, let's build a ship. We have made probably about 40 different costumes. We have teams right now all over the country. We have a team in France and working on a team in Australia. We're just gonna keep onboarding teams because we wanna build year round. It's harder to build for people that are in wheelchairs, but it ultimately starts with the kid. It's whatever they wanna be, and then we make it a reality. Halloween was kind of our initial push, but we're seeing like Comic-Con, right? And what's cool about that community of cosplay, that's a very supportive community. The, the cold reality of childhood diseases are some of them won't be around for next Halloween, so let's find something that we can do while they're here with us. So they have these, that they have these great memories and that their, their families have memories when they're gone. It's almost like a cure for the day because they don't see the wheelchair, they just see these amazing kids and it bridges gaps and overcomes that awkwardness that we have in society. I mean, they're the star of the show. Oh, it's awesome to see. Les plumes sont très importantes dans le cabaret. Un show sans strass, sans plumes, sans paillettes, eh ben, c'est plus du tout du show. Il faut, il faut amener de la plume parce que c'est vivant, parce que ça bouge bien, parce que voilà, ça recrée une atmosphère. Bonjour, je m'appelle Edith Février et je suis responsable de l'atelier Maison Février. Maison Février existe depuis 1929. C'était surtout pour faire des, des coiffes, des parures. Ensuite, la maison s'est spécialisée dans le costume du musical. Nous avons travaillé pour on va essayer de remonter Joséphine Becker, Zizi jean mère toutes ces grandes dames-là. On n'a fait que progresser jusqu'à présent. Les plumaciers amènent par leur, leur amour de la plume, apportent de la vie au costume. Tout est fait à la main. On utilise toujours les mêmes outils d'il y a des années. Quand il y a une coiffe avec 300 plumes de découpées sur 30 danseuses, ça fait énormément de travail de préparation. Toutes nos plumes reviennent d'élevage d'oiseaux pour les plumes. On ne tue pas les... Les oiseaux, pour obtenir leurs plumes, on ne doit utiliser pour la création de nos costumes que des plumes reconnues comme l'autruche, le faisan, le coq, l'oie, la pintade. Et c'est important de, de garder ce, ce métier bien français et, et tellement rare. Donc c'est très utile voilà, qu'on qu puisse conserver notre savoir-faire et le transmettre de génération en génération. De voir nos créations sur scène, bah, c'est toujours un plaisir. 
C'est merveilleux, c'est magnifique. Une fois que la danseuse le porte, chaque plumacière est contente de voir son travail finalisé et mis en, en valeur par la danseuse. Et c'est la récompense voilà, de tout ce travail en amont, euh, de ces mois et ces mois de, de préparation de costumes. C'est la beauté même. <rire> Yo no creo que ser superior le prohíba enseñar, al contrario, tener habilidades no es un privilegio, sino una responsabilidad. Hola, soy Moisés Vázquez, tengo 27 años y doy clase en la Facultad de Ciencias, como Spider-Man. Acostumbro a salir desde casa con el disfraz y llegar disfrazado hasta la universidad. Inicialmente en la universidad cuando llegué con este disfraz hubo de todo tipo de reacciones. Hubo gente que me decían hasta es loco. Pero con el tiempo se han dado cuenta que es una intención honesta. Y es parte de la facultad. Ya me dicen el hombre araña de ciencias. He visto más este, conexión con un alumno a la hora de aclarar dudas con el disfraz. Normalmente yo no muestro mi rostro en entrevistas. Yo creo que realmente no busco la fama, eso es lo importante. No quién lo hace, sino qué se está haciendo. Soy seguidor de los cómics, lo sigo leyendo, lo sigo coleccionando. Decidí disfrazarme como Spider-Man porque un día venía en el transporte público leyendo cómics y en una viñeta estaba Spider-Man frente a un pizarrón dando clase y dije, ese tengo que ser yo. Me encantaría que la gente viera que todos podemos realizar nuestro trabajo siempre con más ganas. En mi caso, disfrazarme me motiva para ser un mejor profesor pero cada quien debe encontrar la manera de hacer su trabajo con mayor felicidad, con mayor vocación.